John 10th chapter, verse number 7. St. John 10. Again, reading in verse number 7 down to verse 11. Then said Jesus unto them again, Very, very, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Mm -hmm. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. My Lord. I am the door. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Mm -hmm. And shall go in and out My and find pasture. Yes. The thief cometh not. The thief cometh not. But for to steal. But for to steal. And to kill. And to kill. And to destroy. And to destroy. I am come. Oh, but I have come. That they may have life. They may have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. And that they might have it more abundantly. Come on. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The good shepherd <coughs> giveth his life for the sheep. That's as far as we'll go with the reading. We're living in some of the most challenging times that the world has ever faced. We're heavily burdened this morning. Pray for us. Our families, our community, our children, they're in situations, saints, that only God can get them out. We've never seen anything like what's going on right now. Saints, the devil knows that he has but a short time. Yes, sir. So he's unloading everything that he has in his arsenal. Yes, he is. He's not holding back anything because he knows that these clouds are about to split. I don't need to hold back. The young people that are growing up today are facing things that we've never seen young people have to face before. Yes, sir. There are various capacities of Christ. In the Old Testament, God had many names. One God, but had many names that depicted different aspects about his divine power. Well, Jesus, there's a similarity there, and there's various aspects of Jesus. We're nowhere in a tough time, but saints, we can have hope. By God, amen. Amen. Saints, we know we're in a difficult time, but saints, you have to understand the God that you chose to serve. Hello, hello. I know you think that your child is so far out there that there's nothing that can happen or nothing that you can do, that the community is so far gone. They're not too far gone for Jesus. I will show you in the Word of God this morning as God opened up the Word of God to me this morning and showed me that there is a Word for this season, for the people of God, for the community, and for our country. Oh my God. Oh my God. Now, there's different aspects of Jesus. Jesus is known as the door. Yes. My God. You must come through him. Yes. Amen. You can't go through a man. You can't say, uh, 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 this man made me say, no, you got to go through Jesus. Amen. And he showed you how you got to come. You got to have faith and you got to repent. He said, repent and believe the gospel. Yes. You got to come through Jesus. Any other way, you're a thief and a robber. Amen. You let anybody join the church any other way than giving up sin and having faith in Jesus, you're a thief and a robber. Amen. You can't get in. You got to pay the full price. Amen. Amen. Man, you can't cheat your way into salvation. Amen. Amen. You gotta have faith in Jesus and you must be willing to repent. They, also, they often call him also the sacrificial lamb. John said, Behold, when he saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which shall take away the sins of the world. I'm thankful for that sacrifice, saints, because I was guilty. Amen. And you were guilty. We were all guilty in sin. 
But one day we came to an altar of prayer. Thank the Lord. And that sacrificial lamb would shed his blood. That blood would be transmitted to the individual. Amen. The high priest. Amen. To the individual for the sins of the people. Amen. One day Jesus got up on the cross. Amen. He died and shed his blood. Thank the Lord. Now all the sins that I committed, thank God it's been washed in the sea of forgetfulness. Thank God the soul was said, what shall wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He said, I am the bread of life. Thank God for the word of God. When you're hungry, if you need something, my God, you can open up the word of God and it'll give you just what you need. You may be going through a difficulty. You may find no one understands me right now. No one perceives what I'm going through. But you will open up the book and just, it's like God knew what you need. It's like even I was telling my wife last night, it's the Bible is alive. Brother Pitch used to always say, the Bible is alive. Lee. That, 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 that theology book or, or that, that philosophy book by Euripides or Plato or Socrates or, or that calculus book, those are dead books. But the Bible is alive. The Bible is real. I never understood fully what Brother Pitts was saying until one day I'm going through a challenge, I'm going through a problem. I just opened up the book and I read this passage many times. I read it many, many times. But it was amazing how that passage that I read many times was meeting the very needs I was going through at that moment. I didn't see this part of it. I didn't see that part. That's the aliveness of the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am Jehovah, my God, Jireh, Jehovah, Shishkanu. He said, I am the, my God, the Lord that healeth me. Yeah. I'm thankful that he's a healer, amen. Yeah. When you're afflicted in your body, amen. Yeah. Thank the Lord. She said, she said, two things happen in the garden. All right. God created us holy and healthy. Yes. He created us holy and healthy. To have communion with him. Well, in the garden, two things happen. When they ate from that tree... Sin came in and we were no longer holy and death and sickness came upon mankind and we were no longer healthy. Amen. Amen. But he said, you got over it, devil, but the seed of a woman is going to come and bruise your head. You're going to bruise his heel because he's going to stump on you. And that seed of a woman, amen, the Messiah, he's going to correct everything that the devil messed up. Okay. Well, he messed up our spiritual with sin and he brought in sickness. But it takes a man redemption. He had to redeem us from both. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there's no redemption. So he had to redeem us from sickness and he had to redeem us from sin. Well, Jesus, when he was up on the cross, amen, that they, they pierced his head with those thorns and they pierced his side. Blood came out. That blood, he died on the cross for our sins. But before he got to the cross, when he was on his way to Golgotha's hill, when he was on his way to Calvary, they began to beat him. They would have these uh, 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 leather pieces and on the end of them was bones and then, and it hit and it ripped the skin back. And it hit and it ripped the skin back. They just didn't beat him to hurt him. My God, they beat him to rip his skin. Well, they thought they was brutalizing and hurting him. But if they just used a regular strap, it would have hurt him, but it wouldn't have ripped the skin. Praise the Lord. Hey, but they was messing up, amen. But when they ripped the skin, amen, the blood began to shed before he got to the cross. That's why the scripture said on the cross, amen, he died for our sin. But the scripture said, by his stripes, he purposed in our healing. Out. We don't got to be saved on Sunday, but cussing somebody out on Monday. Yeah. 
Wednesday, we will got to be going to the altar on Wednesday. Lord, make me a clean heart. But by Thursday, we hating somebody. No, 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 no. Why, my God? Because you're so strong. No, not because I'm so strong, but because we're standing on a rock. Hey, man, we're not standing on sinking sand, on shifting sand. Even when the winds blow, the winds may blow. Hey, Amen. the storms may come. But thank God our, our house can be solid and sound because we stand upon the rock. My God, my God, amen. <laughs> But here, yes, Jesus is all those, but here, saints, help us, Holy Ghost. What we're going through right now, we must understand the good shepherd. And that's what we're going to preach about this morning. Luke 15 and 1. We must know what he meant. And may this inspire your faith to don't give up on anybody or any situation. Luke 15. I've never seen it like this. The good shepherd. The good shepherd. Then drew nearer to him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man received his sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying. So the spiritual or the religious people of the time, the Pharisees and scribes, they murmured because Jesus, the publicans and the sinners, all came around and he had a burden for them. And the spiritual one said, leave them people alone. Leave them out there. Don't be so concerned with them. No, we here, we're clean. We in church. Let's focus on us. Let's leave them out there. Let them do them. But we're gonna focus on, but we we gonna focus on ourselves. So Jesus here broke down his burden, his genuine burden. Saints, come on and read this, brother. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, Yes. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? I'm gonna read. And we hear from. He laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. All right. The good shepherd, the word good in the Greek means chaos, which means noble, wholesome, and beautiful. The good shepherd. He called himself this. Other people called him stuff. He said, I am the good shepherd. Shepherd is one that protects, guides, nurtures a flock, a keeper of the sheep. Now, in this parable sense, he's really dealing with a couple of things in the 15th chapter of Luke here. And he's talking about the levels of his mercy. To this morning, what our community and what our children and what we need and what you're going to have to understand if you're not going to give up hope, there's going to be some people that seem to go so far, you are going to struggle with the burden for them if you don't understand the good shepherd. Yes, Let me take my time. Yes. There's going to be some things your children end up doing, you're going to look at it from your eye as a saint, as a natural eye. And you don't understand the role of a good shepherd. Like that. And you will lose confidence and you won't be able to pray mixed with faith. You may call their name out, but on the inside deep, you will think they've gone too far. But if you understand the good shepherd, oh if you really understand the role of a good shepherd, oh your child may be out there getting high, but you will be praying in faith, right. expecting right. them to walk through those doors. They may say oh some things. I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in God. You won't even listen to that because you understand the good shepherd. I don't want to get ahead of myself this morning, but if you understand the good shepherd, you will pray in faith despite the situation, despite how dark it may look, despite how far gone they may appear. You won't thumb your, thumb your nose on these young people. You will say they just need the good shepherd. My God. Amen. My God. So here, there are three parables 
in this in two different aspects of Christ that you must understand. The first two is the lost sheep and coin, and that was all under the context of one burden. And the second one was the lost son. Well, these are two different levels of mercy. Let's do a little comparison analysis. The second one, so the first two represents a certain depth of mercy. And the second one, or the third one, the son, represents a certain depth of mercy. Well, to understand and appreciate the good shepherd, you must compare it to the father. Now, both of them represent mercy at a high level. Oh my gosh. The son went out there messed up. Okay. Messed up. Destroyed everything that his father had given him. Everything that he was taught. Reproached the family's name. The Jews had no part of swine. And that's exactly what he ended up in. The swine pit. In other words, the very things you teach your child, the very things you tell them, if you do anything, don't do this. That's exactly what the son ran and did. Well, that parable represents the mercy of the father. That although that child went out, that father didn't slam the door to judging. That father didn't say, you messed up too bad. That father didn't say, uh, you went out there and got pregnant, now you're going to go, I ain't going to touch. That father didn't say, you went up there and went to prison, I ain't going to come back, you don't come back around. That father didn't say, okay. you went out there and messed your record up, messed your this up. That father, while he was a great ways off, right that father sat there with open arms yeah. and said, oh, my sister, that's my son. That father was up at night, other people dogging, coming by the house. Oh, you should see your son, your son out there, you should see who he hanging with. You should see what he wearing. You should see what your daughter, she's out there, oh, your child, your child is doing this and that. But the father said, I understand that, but that's not your child. I understand what you're saying. I appreciate your feelings towards it, but you don't understand. This is my son. I was telling my wife. I was telling my wife. I was telling my wife. I said, babe, you can say this. You can say, uh, uh, those thugs out there, they need to, they, you live under the sword, you die. Them old thugs, them old. I said, listen to me. Let me just tell you a parent. I said, you see little Blake, your youngest? Yes. I said, you see a thug. I don't care how far he goes, that mother sees Blake. My God, my Lord, my Lord. You can say what you want to say. Yeah, it can't. Down. Yeah, he got this. Yeah, but to that mother, still play. And that's just play. He got caught up. He's confused. But he's still play. You don't see him. That's my boy. That's my child. That's a good boy. He ain't doing that stuff. He ain't even like that. He's under the influence of that stuff. But that's my child. My God. If you see it like that, oh, you can't imagine God. Yes, he's out there. Yes, he's out there. But God still oh, sees. That's my place. Oh, where's he at? I can't rest. I can't sleep at night. And let me just tell you, a real good parent, I'm going to tell you, when that child is out there, when that child is cutting up, my God, it's a part of that parent that really can't rest. It's a part of that parent that really can't rest. Just thinking. Because I'm going to tell you, when a parent loves, you, 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 you have a tendency to think the worst. Yeah, yeah. Because you're just like, oh, Lord. Yeah. And I don't even want to get too graphic in some of these things. Saints, some of these people aren't just crazy thugged out. A situation just went from zero to a hundred like this. Yeah. It, it, it could be your child. Yeah. It wasn't like this person was crazy. Yeah, you know, I'm a killer. I'm, no. This world is just different right now. Oh the other day we went down to the jail. And we... Went up, and they put us in the room. There was a glass between us. Young man right now from trial for one of the murders. Saints, you would have thought I came to talk to him about joining the basketball team. Huh. Completely aloof. In my mind, do you understand? You're going to, you're facing prison. You, you would never come home. Yeah. He just said, Brother, how you doing? You came to sit. And I'm sitting there. I couldn't talk about the case because a lot of times they'll be listening. Even if it is a minister, they'll be listening. So I didn't
didn't want to hear me say, I did it, I didn't do it, I wouldn't want to touch. I don't, we just showing, sometimes just your presence. Amen. Okay. Yes. So we just here. We just here. We ain't talking about it. We read scripture. Pray to him. Don't give up. Let allow these situations call you to get closer to God. Saints, I'm sitting here and realize. Do you realize that a young man is standing before God right now? Yes. Will never have another chance to get saved. You just pray. Make it clear. A person that pulled a trigger, this ain't a video game. This, this generation grew up with video games to kill people. This ain't a video game. It's not a rap video where they come and they shoot people after the video. They're all actors. After the video's over, they got the blood in on it. They all jump man, that was good. Man. Right. This ain't no rap video, man. They're not getting up. If you did this, you sent somebody to eternally unprepared in your own family. Saints just sitting there just like this. Jesus represents the merciful Father that despite whatever you've done, one, I'm looking for you. And two, I'm here for you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to forgive you. Yes, you wasted all of our money. Yes, you destroyed the family name, but I'm here for you. I'm here for you. And the death of that Father is so strong that that's what we normally look at in that parable. But that's really not the burden of that parable. The burden of that parable, his real focus is the good shepherd. Okay. We, that merciful father, oh Lord, I want to make sure I find this right. That merciful father was awesome. But saints, sometimes our family and children need beyond that. That's, okay. right. that's what the good shepherd is about. I'll right, get to that in a moment. But the real burden of that third parable, he said the publicans and the sinners. <coughs> Here are you guys coming, and you're telling me not to be with these people. And he said, the other brother is the real burden. We made the prodigal son the star of the show. But the other son, if you read why he said it, remember Jesus is rhetorical. He'll tell you something based upon something. The reason of that was not showing his mercy. The reason of that was showing that you guys are trying to judge them, telling them to get away from me, when you really should be the ones that celebrate. Here you, in other words, here, here you get that attitude because I'm extending mercy when you should be celebrating. Here this individual is messed up. You should be the first one Say, you ever seen somebody uh, 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 that's always nitpicking people? Just upset at this. I'm like this. I'm like this. You doing all that? Are you serious? Brother Hatton, he knows so much stuff. We were talking earlier that he knows so much stuff on so many people. And when people come to him, I'm like this, and this person, I don't see this person. I'm like this. Whoa, whoa. Roll back the curtain to 19. 19. Whoa. Are you? Saying that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 you you saying that. Yeah, yeah. You, you, so now you, you're upset at me. I shouldn't be using it. You're upset at me for extending mercy. Uh, Why? Uh, Why? That's the pure, that's the burden of that. He said that other son that wouldn't even come in the house. No. I'm upset. How you gonna you know you done messed up? Don't you know who that is? They shouldn't be doing nothing. That, that's the burden. But he talked and he phases in there. The merciful father. Okay. But since <laughs> even the prodigal son, how low he went, he came back home. Thank Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Hold on. Hold on. Understand what Jesus is saying. Good shepherd. There's a depth of mercy no matter what they've done, I forgive them. But there's another depth of mercy that they're out there. They're so messed up that they're not even coming back. Good shepherd, come here. Go get them. My God, my God. Okay. My Lord. Okay. My Lord. The Father never left home. Okay. Mm. Although he was merciful, that's what we celebrate. The Father, he never left home. Okay. Okay. Good. Good, the Father. Although he was good, he never, but the good shepherd. Okay. Saints. Son, y'all hold on for a minute. Somebody My God. My Lord. Somebody's missing. My Lord. Somebody's missing. Somebody's missing. Yeah. Somebody, somebody's missing. Right. Somebody ain't got a mind to come back. My so, God. Somebody's mind is messed up. Somebody's so bound that they all know. Somebody, somebody, somebody's child My is so far gone. Yeah. I don't want to talk about God no more. My See, God. the prodigal son, he knew the way back home. But some people lost their way back home. They got confused. False religion. False doctrine. Bound up. I think the church of God is crazy. You think the church of God is crazy. You think Jesus was just some man? Now you're talking about Muhammad or Buddha. Listen, you're so messed up. Your mind. The, the good shepherds, I'm not going to give up on them. They just lost their way. I'm going to go and find 
That's what he's for. The good shepherd. The good shepherd don't give up on nobody. The good shepherd. He said, Isaiah 118, let's line it up. The good shepherd. The good shepherd is the one that is needed when they don't even want to come to church no more. Oh, the good shepherd is needed. Amen. When they're bound up with habits, addictions. Come on and read. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Yes. Though your sins be as scarlet, yeah. they shall be as white as snow. All right, the prodigal son. He said in verse number 17, 15, 17. Go back there. So Isaiah, keep that thought. Come now, let us reason, said the Lord. In order for a person to get saved, they must count the cost. In order for them to count the cost, they must reason. I know I'll have to give up these things, but I want to be saved. I know I may not be able to do this anymore, but I want to be saved. And I know whatever God has for me is better than whatever I'm giving up. They're reasoning now. I know I plan on getting saved. My God. I don't want to wait too late. I plan on giving my life to God. I don't want to. I remember saying, I used to always say this as a saint child. I said, Lord, I want to come on my own. Okay. I don't know if you understand that the saint child, how deep that is. I've seen saints rolled up here. Okay. I've seen saints children with diseases yes. and, and, and long prison sentences. Okay. I said, Lord, I want to come on my own. Amen. Lord, please, dear God, I don't want for you to have to do something because God can help you. You want to be strong? I don't want to be saying God can help you. I said, Lord, I don't want you to have to help me. Okay. So here he says, verse 17, read Brother Frank. Isaiah said, come, let us reason. And when he came to himself. Okay, stop right there. The lost sheep had strayed away. And in the process, was so far away, and the prodigal son, it says, when he came to himself, although he went out, he never lost his sense of reason. The good shepherd is needed and is able even when a person has lost their sense of reason. My God. You can sit down with the child and nothing you say makes sense. Yes, sir. You see their situation, you're telling them, listen to me, man. Everything you're doing, you're going down. Right, right. You're going further, you're getting messed up more. They lost, you're trying to reason with them. But they lost their sense of reason. The prodigal son, as messed up as he was, it said when he came to himself, he said, hold on, I ain't going out like this, man. Well, no. Ain't nothing out here. Right. Ain't nothing, I've been out here, man. No, ain't no, I don't know nobody got it going on. They all messed up. He came to himself and said, hold on, my father's house, they got food all over the place. Amen. It was peace. It was just like a runaway child. A runaway child like, I'm leaving here. I'm 14 years old and you ain't going to tell me I got to be in by next time. I'm going, well, go, on, go ahead and run away. When you're getting hungry at 10 and you realize that you, you, you had a nice bed, you had somebody, you wasn't playing, paying no utility bill, food was just coming, you ain't know where it was coming from. Yeah. Amen. So here this young man was out there and he said, man, hold on. He came to himself. He began to reason. Okay. The sheep had no ability, has no ability to reason. Yes, sir. Just out there. The prodigal son had lost his ability to reason. It's cold. The sheep stays away. It's raining. The sheep stays away. The night is far spent. The sheep stays away. But the good shepherd All right. is for those individuals okay. that whenever you talk to them, 
despite what you say, it doesn't make sense. Okay. It doesn't register. Now I'm going to my prayer closet and praying for the good shepherd to show up. My God, my Lord, my Lord. Only he can get to her. You do it. I'm saying everything I know to say. Saints, may this inspire you. Saints, one brother said, God had to deliver him from a reasoning spirit. Every time it gets, no, I, I, I it's a mess. Well, how would it? The devil gave him a reasoning spirit that he had an excuse every time on why not to get saved. Okay. Every, every time something came, he couldn't help it. He just said, no, I can't get saved right now because of this. Or, or, or this right here. He just reasons his way out of his salvation. Yes. Well, here, he said, the, the sheep out there, you ever see some people out there and didn't want to be? Yeah. I don't know if you ever talk to a sinner and they say, I, don't, I ain't even happy, brother. Yeah, Mom, I don't even go out no more. Yeah. I don't do my. I, 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 you sitting there in your mind, you will almost get to, you get confused trying to get. Then won't you come and say they lost the ability to reason? Oh, they can't. When you thinking it's lost. Look at you look like a bum. Look at you. Look at the guys you messing with, girl. Look at anything you do. Come on, you lost that. You come on, child. Think about it. Right. Oh, the good shepherd. Go ahead. Yeah. The good shepherd mm -hmm. is saying, "I'll go," yeah. and I want to get to that in a moment. All right. The prodigal son had had did not he had lost his sense of navigation. He knew his way back. The lost sheep. He had to, the uh, the lost sheep. The shepherd had to go and find him. Some had gotten so lost. So lost. Some of us had got my my God. Had got so caught up. Yes, Some of us have got so confused that we didn't understand, couldn't comprehend our way back. Mine is twisted by the devil. Saints, right now we're in a day and age, Saints, you've got to understand this message. Because if you don't, let me just give it to you real. It's probably not a household in this building that somebody in your family don't think that the Bible is, it, it, it probably ain't right, and the church of God truth, it don't make no sense. You confused, I was raised wrong, it don't make sense. Don't talk to me about free from sin. Don't talk to me about God, Jesus. Don't talk to me about one true church. Don't talk to me about divine healing. Don't talk to me about, you raised them that way. You're thinking that they're just out there in sin. They just need a good message to come to. No, 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 no. Their minds are messed up. They're inside. They can't perceive the thing no more. They're, the devil done twisted them up. The devil got them so confused. Their navigation within them is messed up. Well, the good shepherd has said, don't give up hope for them. I'll be a GPS. I'll go and find them. I know how to talk to them. I know what to say. I know how to bring their minds back around again. I know the words to you. I know the scenario to you. I have to make them and, uh, and clear that confusion. Right? Don't give up on them. Don't listen to what they're saying and cause you. I ain't praying for them no more. Keep praying. Just pray for the good shepherd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the message. Jesus said, although you lost, my God, lost your understanding of the way home. I love them so much I would leave the 99 and go and search, he said, until. I, in other words, search, it said, I'll find a way to reconnect with their reasoning power. My Lord. My Lord, my Lord did you hear that, saying? He said, search until he found it. He said, although they messed up their navigating process, I will go and find a way to reconnect with their reasoning power that they lost. Thank you, Lord. My Lord. Good, he says here, touch the things. That's my, my, my. Lord help us. He said here, God will touch the things that still remain in them and use that as a foundation to bring their mind back around. Search till he found it. Reconnect with your reasoning power to fix 
stick his neck in and his leg in, the more he ate, the more entangled he became. And now he's eating, but now he's twisted and he's so bound up and he's so caught up in the midst of it. And now he sits there and he says, hold on. Hold on, he's eating the grass around. Hold on, I want to get out now. And now the more he tries to get out, the more entangled he becomes. The more entangled he becomes. See, you don't understand. If they were waiting on the good father, my God, although the child, although the sheep, my God, now he don't want to be there no more. Now he sees I'm caught up. I, I don't want to be here no more. If he just had the good father, there was no way he would have ever been saved. But oh, the good shepherd, he left the 90 and and he's looking all over the place and he's searching and he's searching and it's starting to rain and the winds are blowing. He's searching and he hears just a, a little faint a little faint cry over there and he sees the sheep caught up, my God, in the fire caught up in a situation that they don't want to be in no more. They want to be saved. They want to be free. But they caught up. I want to come home. Daddy, I want to come home. But I'm caught up. I'm caught up. I got spirits in I got things I'm in. I'm all tied up. I can't see my way out of it. But the good shepherd says, I see you caught up. But I heard the faint cry. Come on, Lord, look at my God. Get back off of this. Get back off of this fight. my God, but I'm going to deliver you. My God. I'm going to beat back those spirits. The good shepherd is saying tonight, this morning, all I need is a little faint cry. All I need is a little faint cry. I'll come carry you. All I need is a little faint cry. Sometimes the sheep up under darkness without the shepherd guide, they would go to the edge and they're eating. And they miscalculate. And they fall off the edge. And they fall maybe 20 feet to the ledge. It's a small little ledge that they landed on. Now they're just out there. Broke a bone. Leg messed up. Fell off the ledge of the mountain. Have mercy. Have mercy. Tired and hungry. Come on, have mercy. Oh, In this situation, <coughs> their only hope is that some type of way the good shepherd is willing to go above and beyond. Because the shepherd would normally look in the pastures into what he sees. As far as I could see, he see anything. But he don't even see this. But a shepherd that's a good shepherd, good shepherd. they will look every single place. And when they don't see you, nowhere that they should have seen you, They'll go above and beyond. There it is. Go to the ledge and begin to look down the ledge and say, it's got to be around here somewhere. Hear a faint cry down the end of that ledge. That shepherd will risk his own life. Leave his flock behind. Crawl all the way down that mountainside to grab that one lost sheep. We're talking about this one. Go ahead. Go. Put him up on. My Lord, my Lord. Saints, some of us fell off. Yes, sir. My God. God. Yes, we did. Yes. Amen. Oh Lord. Amen. 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 Some of us. Oh Lord. My Lord. Wow.
Some of us fell off the mountain. Some of us went too far. <laughs> to the common. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We put on the front. We put on our clothes that look nice. And we came in front of the saints like we had it going on. But saints, we have fell off. We didn't have the money we act like we had. We didn't have the peace we act like we had. We didn't have the life that we act like we had at that time. Some of us saints have fell off. We fell off, my God. We wasn't on top no more. My God, we weren't just pushing the stuff. We was using the stuff. My God, some of us, my God, was doing some stuff that was before, but we fell off. But I'm thankful to God. Amen. That although we fell off the mountain, Although we fell off the cliff, I'm thankful that God rolled up his sleeve, reached way down, and lifted us up, my God. Even though some of our children may have fell off, my God. Some of our friends may have fell off. They may be addicted. They may be out there. They may be bound up. They may be in a double, triple, or quadruple marriage. My God, they fell off, my God. But God in mercy will send a good shepherd, my God. He'll keep searching, keep looking. And although they fell off, he'll reach way And lift them up. Thank you. And the last aspect of a good shepherd. Sheep are most are almost completely defenseless creatures. They're not made or designed to survive on their own. Amen. When they stray, they are often the victims of prey. I'm sorry, they're often Pray for the predators. Amos expresses the depth of the love and commitment of a good shepherd searching for a lost sheep. That although the predators have caught up with you, if the good shepherd can just show up, over to Amos 3.12 as we close. Sing it good. Mama. The predator got some of our children today. The predators got some of our children. The things we try to keep them away from have gotten some of our children. Got our community today. But oh, a good shepherd. Amos chapter 3. The shepherd would go out searching all day long. He can sense, my God, he don't see anything, but he can sense one of my sheep is nearby. He keeps searching. Something is just telling him, don't turn around and go back home. Keep searching. Oh, I'm thankful for that long walk to call that day I got saved. He kept searching. Amen. He kept searching, my God. He could have cut it off and said, I'm done. Oh, but the good shepherd, he keeps searching. Till finally, when he was about to turn around and go back, he hear some commotion in the distance. The shepherd, my God, will draw closer to see what's that noise I'm hearing over there. What's that noise that I hear over there? He comes up and he draws closer, my Lord, and he sees a predator, a mountain lion, has got the sheep. A park ranger. It's too late. The other day, last Sunday, there was a pit bull out front to the left here. And the lady was walking her dog, or a man was walking his dog. I believe it was a man. The lady was walking her pit bull, I believe it was. And the pit bull got to the puppy. Same thing happened. We were growing up. We had a pit bull. And a little puppy came down the street. The pit bull got to the puppy and got it in his jaws. We, by the time we got out there, the dog lay dying. They said that the man was out there crying like a little baby. <laughs> my dog, my God. Well, in the role of a sheep that's gone astray, if a park ranger or a civilian or just a 
another shepherd walks by and see a sheep. They'll rescue you. Try to identify and send it back. But if a predator has it in his clutches, started to devour that pedestrian, that ranger, or that shepherd whose sheep that wasn't, it's too late. It's too late. It's got you. It's too late. But, what? The good shepherd. Amos began to break out the good shepherd. He'll see that the sheep is caught up. The predator has got them. What's that predator? That predator is marijuana. Oh my God. Oh God. That predator is lean. Sir. What's that predator? My daughter like girls. My son like boys. That's a serious predator. What's that predator? My son is hanging around those that's packing heat. And he feels he got to pack heat. What's that predator that got my child? Call him out, brother. Call him out. What's that predator that got my child? My God, yes. Well, a pedestrian will say, your child is too far gone. Okay. A ranger will say, I'm skilled in this. And that animal is already <coughs> in that lion's mouth. Another shepherd will say, I wish I was here a little while sooner, but now it's too late. The lion is devouring it. Amos said, I understand all of that, but you got to understand the good shepherd. Yeah. Come on and read my friend. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. As the shepherd take it out of the mouth of the lion. My Lord, as the shepherd. Lady. Take it out of the mouth of a lion, two legs. Or a piece of an ear. Or a piece of an ear. So shall the children of Israel be taken out of them that dwell in Samaria mm -hmm. in the corner of a bed. My Lord. My Lord. So the shepherd says, I see the sheep. The lion has already began to devour. It's too late from all these people's perspective. All right, but the good shepherd says, Come on now. You don't understand. Come on. Let me put it to you like this. It would be kind of like your child. Oh. It was a young man that got shot over near St. Louis. His name was Michael Brown. This was a few years back. He had got into a situation at the store, left the store. And for some reason, him and the police had an encounter. It's disputable what actually had happened at that point. He ended up getting shot. Either the police were defending themselves or being overly aggressive. He ends up on the ground. Well, they call it other backup. Backup arrives. They're dealing with the situation and they're securing the situation. Michael Brown's parents show up. Mm -hmm. They see their child sitting there on the ground. The police, no doubt through their expertise, says where he's shot at is not likely he's gonna survive. So they don't they're walking around his body, talking, and he just got shot. He's laying there on the ground, just got shot like moments before. Bodies warm, this thing bleeding, just well, the parents show up and they see the people just walking around. <clears throat> so they're securing the area, they're doing protocol. But the parents ain't stuck no protocol. My child is sitting here just got shot. I expect the parent, I expect he ain't no threat no more. Go over there, do mouth to mouth, do something to Michael, do something. That's Michael, that that that's Blake. Well, they never stop what they're doing. And they keep the investigation, and they held the parents back. And I tell you, I got a lot of respect for Mike's parents, my God. Because I'm going to tell you, I probably would have went to jail that day. <laughs> my child is sitting there, you, and I haven't seen you do everything in your power. I'm not talking about going to jail for violence. I'm talking about going to jail to the mouth to mouth. Can I do anything that kind of, some type of way, rescue my child? I can see y'all do hurt them. Get a shock his heart. Do something. Put the thing down his mouth. Do Figure out. Well, what's that? Sheep will go and it's devoured. It's down the throat. Most of its vitals have 
have already been swallowed, but a couple of legs, whenever you're eating a big object, the, the legs is kind of, sometimes the last thing to get in there, and the head, the end of the head, is kind of the last thing that gets in. He said, if the shepherd, the good shepherd, if he sees just a couple of pieces of the leg, or the ear, although he looks like it's too late, Although it looks like he's devoured, All right. he kind of looks over there and sees, yes, it's a lion. That was a roaring lion. Yes, the devil didn't got him. Yes. But I see the toe moving. Oh my God. Yes. I see just the ear twitching. It looks like they're devoured. But because I see just a little, God is saying, I don't care how bad the situation is. Just give me something to work with. Just give me be out there. My God, you may be way long, but before you go to bed, just kneel on your knee. Come on. Lord, Father, I'm, I just got high. But Dad, please forgive me, Lord. Don't let me go too far. Just, just, just give me something to work with. Just say, I ain't saying, but I'm still going to church. Just say, I ain't saying, but I'm still listening to gospel music from time to time. I'm still, I'm, 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 you're sure. God is saying, I don't care how devoured you may be. The good shepherd is saying, it don't matter how deep the situation is in, but that backslider might have gone, he might have gone back, but if I just sense something to work with, if I just see something down in him that I can still relate to, I will move that lion back, I will reach down his throat, I will grab that sheep out, and I will put it on my shoulder, I'll take him back, and I'll nurse him back to hell. The good shepherd, the good shepherd, the good shepherd is saying, Although that situation may look like they devoured him, it's nothing else to work with. He's not looking at the vital side. He's not looking at how much he has to work with. He's just saying, just give me a piece. Just give me a piece. Just come down to an altar of prayer. Just let God know, Lord, I haven't felt you in years. But there's been something down in you that you know wanted to be saved. Yes. If you can work with that, I don't feel this, I don't feel that, all I'm going on is faith yes. and knowing that I have something down in me that want to be saved. The good shepherd is saying tonight, this morning, if you come back, if you just give me something to work with, if you tell me you want to come, I'll come and find you. May God bless you. My God. Amen. Sister Chris is going to sing a verse of song after which we'll have the altar call. <coughs>
Amen. And today, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.